So once you've uh, built the website and uh, you're ready for it to go live, I just want to walk you through uh, the upgrade process. Now, uh, there's a lot of different ways um, that clients might choose to manage things as they go to upgrade their website. Uh, so it could be around emails and domains, things like that. Uh, so uh, we'll take you through a few different options here. So uh, when you're ready to upgrade, uh, either you or the client can do this. So if your client is fairly savvy and understands about emails and domains and things like that, they can go and do it. Uh, if uh, you want to do that process for them, that's fine. And then what you can do is actually set them up so that they can uh, pay for it right at the end. And I'll explain how that happens. So let's assume you're going to do this for the client. Uh, so you can jump into their dashboard uh, through your design studio, click upgrade now, and it will take you into the upgrade process. So you've got a few options. Some clients, uh, they want to go live you know, as soon as possible. You're ready to go live. Others, you want them to pay uh, for the subscription, but they're not quite ready to go live. And there can be various reasons for this. Potentially, they're waiting for a photo shoot, um, but yet they want their email addresses and domain names and that sort of thing purchased, or uh, potentially... Um, there's just a few final things they're waiting on, but it's just easier to upgrade them now. So you can do that as well. Uh, upgrade and go live later or go live as soon as possible. Most of the time, you're going to choose go live as soon as possible. Uh, this is around the domain name. So do you have an existing website domain name? Uh, most of the time people do, but occasionally they don't. If they don't, really easy. Click new domain, put in the domain name, and then click buy domain. And it will, uh, if it's a brand new domain, they're free for the first year, and then it's $35 plus just... Uh, for the rest of the of the time uh, if we go back at any stage you can just go back in the thing in the process here but let's go to existing domain and uh, let's say uh, rocketspark.com is our domain now so let's, it's going to check it's actually uh, in this situation checking uh, our system because you can't have a domain name set up on two rocketspark uh, websites so uh if it comes back and says this is already in use, you just might need to think about, okay, does has this client been a RocketSpark client before? Have someone set up an account before? And potentially, if you've already purchased the domain uh, through RocketSpark, uh, it might um, be on a different account or something like that. So, so if that happens, um, this is where that'll show up. But if not, so here we go, RocketSpark.com. I can click Next. Uh, and it's asking if you want to transfer your domain. So uh, this might be an existing domain name. Maybe it's hosted with lots, there's lots of domain name hosts out there. Uh, most of the time, uh, if there's emails involved, so, you know, info at and then the domain name, you probably want to keep those, the domain name hosted where it is. We're more than happy to host domain names, uh, but occasionally uh, it's just easier to transfer everything across. So if you want to transfer, you can click transfer. You'll need the UDAI code for that. Uh, so let me click transfer here um, and then it will uh, ask you for those details. If I, let's go back to the domain name section and change this. If I say don't transfer, which is the easiest, it's not going to ask for anything like that. And what it will do when we get further down the process, it'll say, um, here's the details you need to change on that domain name. So that's things like the A record. So to point your domain name to the new uh, website as well. All of this information is going to get sent to the end user, the client, whoever's email address is on the account. So just be aware of that. Uh, that you might want to um, change that email address while you do this process if you're doing it all for them. Uh, if they're going to do most of it, then that's fine. So let's click Don't Transfer. And uh, this is talking about self-managing domains. Yep, no problem. Uh, we will uh, sort that out. So uh, let's click Continue. So then uh, it's email addresses. So do we have email addresses at that account or not? Uh, so if I say no, it's then going to ask me, do I want email addresses um, at this account? Okay. And if you add that, $5 a month for our New Zealand uh, partners uh, per mailbox, and you can add as many as you need to add there. If we go back, uh, let's say, do you have existing email accounts? Yes, I do. Now, this process is going to be different depending on what happens. If you've asked to transfer the, the domain name, then you say, yes, I also have email addresses. We'll need to do a migration of those. Um, so it can get a little bit messy at that point. We're more than happy to help you out with that and, and work through that with you and the client. But sometimes it's just easier to go, actually, their emails are working fine. Uh, their domain name is hosted with a company that is, is fine, so let's do that. Sometimes people want to transfer their domain name, but actually leave, transfer it to RocketSpark, but then leave their emails with whoever is hosting it at the moment. Especially if it's uh, Outlook or Office 365 
or uh, Google. So if they've got um, Google for Business email accounts, um, sometimes those are just easier to leave exactly where they are. So uh, when we come into um, this section, this is talking about which uh, plan they want to be on <clears throat> and whether they're paying monthly or annually. So uh, obviously, um, if sites aren't e-commerce, then they're just on this website builder plan. If they're uh, an e-commerce that has under 400 products or doesn't want uh, some of the new uh, customer accounts features or the vend integration, things like that, then the e-commerce grow works. And if they want the full e-commerce pro, then um, you can select that. And so basically, you can just select a plan here. Uh, you can go back and change it at any time. Select that plan, no. Uh, let's go and select this plan, okay. Or finally, I wanna pay annually. It clearly says the annual price there, and I can select that plan. Once I get into this part of it, fill in all the client's details, and then when we get to the bottom, they can choose how they want to pay. Now, if they pay um, monthly, they can only use credit card, but if they choose annually, they can choose credit card or bank transfer. Often, bank transfer is the easiest thing to do for the client, so if you're doing this for them, they don't have to give you their credit card details. You fill in all their details, and then when you click pay by bank transfer, it just sends an email and says, here's the amount that owes, and here is the bank account uh, to put it into. If you have domain names or email addresses or things like that, that'll all appear here in the payments summary and then the, the value will be different. Uh, the other option is that you can actually go through and do all of the domain name information and do all of the email information and even do the this section, so what kind of plan they're on and whether they're paying annually or monthly and just send them, uh, so if I choose one of these, and then if you um, go back to dashboard here, and then you get them to log in and upgrade. If I click this upgrade button, it skips all of that information we've already put in because we've already got the information and just asks them for this information, which is you know, pretty easy for them to manage their names, details, that kind of thing, and then their credit card number or bank transfer. So that's a really good way for you to do all that technical stuff and then for them to actually um, pay for the site. Um, if you're paying for the site, that's totally fine. Still put their details in, in terms of a company name, uh, and then just put in your company credit card details there, and then it will recur uh, on that if that's uh, what you're doing for the client as well. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a process from start to finish of upgrade. Um, if it's paid by credit card, the payment will go straight through, through straight away. And if you've chosen to go live straight away and the domain name is, isn't being transferred and all that, it'll actually go live pretty quickly, um, sometimes you know instantly. Uh, if you do need to um, transfer domain names, then that you know there's a process around that. Uh, if you uh, are sending out new email addresses, then it's going to email all the details for those to the billing address. Uh, so there, there's a few different uh, situations and um, I'll show you in a second um, a, a way that you can decipher which situation might be best for your client. Uh, but that's the whole process in terms of upgrading your account. This type form uh, could be a really good way to understand what you should be doing with your client's email addresses and domain names before the website's ready to go live. Uh, you can access this uh, type form uh, link from in our support guide. So if you search in the design uh, studio section of our support guides uh, for uh, email and domain names, you'll find this guide uh, and it will help you kind of uh, through the process. So uh, the first thing, click start, and that's going to ask you, does the client already have a domain name? And this is kind of the most important question, the starting point. This determines uh, lots of things. So uh, if they do have a domain name, Great, yes they do. Uh, do you want to transfer that domain name to RocketSpark? Uh, if, if they've got um, email accounts and all that sort of thing already set up, then probably you'd say no. Uh, but if you um, uh, if they don't uh, have emails and that sort of thing on their domain name, then you might want to transfer it to RocketSpark. We are obviously happy to transfer a domain name that already has emails set up, but it just complicates things a little bit. So let's say, do you want to transfer it? Yes, I do. Uh, does the client have email accounts uh, with that uh, domain name, let's say they do, yes. Um, who are those email accounts with? Uh, let's say they're with Google. And then what it provides you is this link to a Google Doc, and uh, this Google Doc uh, will give you the best situation. So basically it's transferring existing uh, domain name to RocketSpark, but not transferring email accounts. And it talks about who should use that, uh, gives you some pointers on what you should do, 
before you begin uh, transferring the domain name, things like that, and uh, talks you through the whole situation. Uh, if we jump back to here, let's go back to the top, we can start again. In this situation, let's say no, uh, the client doesn't have a domain name, uh, and does the client want uh, domain email accounts with Rocket Spark? And let's say yes. And then we're presented with this uh, Google Doc, and this Google Doc talks about um, either transferring an existing domain name or setting up a new one, and uh, it, it talks about who uh, the option is, uh, is best for and then again gives you all the details of all of that. So uh, all of, there's lots of different situations um, that can come about when we come to uh, emails and domains. So uh, this is a really nice way to get the right information all the time uh, rather than second guessing what you should do and when you should do it. We're happy to help talk you through this as well. So feel free to contact us and we're happy to help you with that upgrade process. Uh, but this type form uh, could be really useful to make sure you've answered all the right questions before you begin.